Um, okay, just briefly, uh, PIA, uh, we're an analytical uh, and report proprietary research uh, company. Uh, we uh, supply institutions, banks, hedge funds with uh, technical analysis report and trade recommendations on a daily, biz uh, daily basis. These are sent uh, to our website, uh, PIA First Trader. Uh, onto the dashboard uh, by 7 a.m. in the morning. We uh, analyze and offer analysis on seven, sorry, 11 FX pairs as well as indices uh, and interest rate futures. Um, all reports are uh, supplied with stops, targets, and reasons uh, for uh, the analysis. PIA First is a, a new offering. Um, which is aimed at the retail uh, investor as opposed to uh, as opposed to institutions. Okay, the company has been established for over 11 years, and we are FSA regulated. Uh, I think that's my uh, bit of uh, my two minutes over and done with. Um, so today um, we're going to talk about uh, Fibonacci, um, how to use it in trading, how it's formulated, um, and basically uh, how I uh, utilize it um, to, uh, to, to to get decent um, targets and reversal um, levels for entries. Okay, uh, I do use it a lot in Elliott Wave principle. Uh, it's also used in complex uh, symmetrical patterns. Um, and we're going to discuss uh, all this today. PIA stands for Price Information Advantage. Can everybody else hear me okay? According to the... Uh... Okay, super. Okay, so key things we're going to talk about today. Okay, it's Fibonacci. That's what we found in nature. We're going to talk about different price action, what I look for um, at key uh, FIB levels, okay, the golden ratio, uh, the full sequence for trading, not just, um, as I said, in Elliott Wave, but also in uh, complex uh, symmetrical patterns. I'm going to discuss Elliott Wave principle, uh, the number sequence, uh, and as I said, complex uh, symmetrical patterns. Okay, so Fibonacci, Fibonacci numbers can be found not just in trading, but in all uh, all walks of life in uh, in nature. Okay, can be found in seashells. I'm not going to bore you too long with this bit. Uh, they can be found in flowers, um, plant formations. Okay, and they can also be found in parts of the human body. Um, in particularly, the hand uh, can uh, is is based around uh, Fibonacci. So the number sequence, what is the number sequence? The number sequence um, is basically an ordered number sequence where two um, or two numbers get added together, two consecutive numbers get added together to produce the next one. So obviously the, the sequence starts with zero, then zero, one equals one, one plus one equals two, uh, two plus three equals five, etc. cetera, uh, infinitum. Uh, and we just keep on, keep on going. Okay, the golden ratio I have my calculator handy. Uh, you basically take any two uh, Fibonacci numbers. So here we've got 610 highlighted. Okay, you divide that by 377, and that gives us 1.618, which is okay. The golden ratio. Okay, it's the mathematical constant is approximately six uh, 1.618. Okay, so what? Are the Fibonacci or Fibonacci uh, sequence number sequence for trading? Now, not all traders uh, use the full sequence. A lot of chart packages uh, will only give you the basics. Um, some very basic chart packages will actually only give you the retracement numbers, uh, which are 61.8, 50, 38.2, and 23.6. You want to make sure uh, that your chart provider, whether it's your broker, um, or if you have an outside source, that they also uh, include 161.8%, uh, obviously one of the prime numbers, 
uh, 127.2, 261.8, 423.6. Okay, 420, <coughs> excuse me, 423.6% uh, being used mainly uh, for commodities and uh, and commodity currencies. Okay, so the full sequence there, 23.6, 38.2, 50%, 61.8, 78.6 and 88.6 are also very important uh, Fibonacci numbers. And 127.2, when we get to, on to talking about uh, complex uh, chart uh, patterns and formations. Okay, basically if you want to, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not going to bore you going to all the um, logistical or mathematical uh, sequences, but if you take any number on here, if you, if you want to work out why 23.6, why 38.2, if you take 610 again, okay, and you divide it by one of the numbers previously, so here we'll divide it by 144, okay, that gives you 423.6, so that's that Fibonacci extension. And if we take 610 and divide it by 2584, it gives us 23.6, okay, so obviously you're dividing your prime number by any numbers in that sequence uh, to get these other stages, okay? Don't ask me why, but the market, people, people do argue that the reason that uh, it stops or pauses or retraces around Fibonacci uh, numbers is just because the masses look to it, okay? That's not what Elliott Wave principle uh, is about. Elliott Wave principle talks about um, mass euphoria uh, and then um, pullbacks and then more euphoria and then obviously into the fifth wave which we'll talk about in a while is obviously when when waving is ending and this is when they talk about the novice uh, trader or the outside trader you know it's when it's when the taxi driver is talking about the fact that the euro is going to be disbanded uh, that is normally when the fifth wave uh, pushes up and finishes and then that's where the smart money gets out and that's where we get our ABC uh, retracement. So Elliott Wave principle, Elliott Wave principle mainly uses the blue numbers, okay, 23.6, 38.2, uh, fourth wave pullbacks, 50 and 61.8% for um, the, first, the second wave pullback, okay, or retracement, I should say. Um, these are very rarely used um, in Elliott Wave. Then we've got 161.8%. 261.8% is the projected fifth wave. Um, again, that's the hardest wave um, to forecast, as it can be a short five, um, it can be a long five. Um, long fives are normally up to 423.6%, as I said previously, um, which is normally commodity currencies or commodities themselves. Okay, complex symmetrical patterns. We're going to be talking about bats, uh, butterflies. <laughs> Some people think it's hogwash. Um, when you do find them, and if they do work, and um, Statisticians have, uh, have looked at it and uh, claim that, uh, or analysts have looked at, looked at it at, 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 um, at symmetrical patterns and claim they have about 70% hit ratio. So if you can find one and if it if it does line up, they're uh, they're definitely worth considering. And we're going to show a few uh, in a while that uh, that have been present lately. Which uh, one was actually sterling dollar on a daily chart which uh, I was lucky enough when I was working uh, for a trade management company, um, rode, the, uh, rode the, the, the right wing down basically, and then the retracement back up. So if you can get it on a, on a daily chart, obviously the pips that you can um, get out of these symmetrical patterns can be very, very good indeed. Risk reward uh, can be anything from sort of five to one all the way up to sort of 20 to one. Um, to 
and 127.2 are the key Fibonacci levels uh, that you need to look for in these complex uh, symmetrical patterns. And obviously, the Gartley's in there as well. Okay, so price action. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a quick drink. Okay, so one thing that we need to look for at uh, fib levels is price action. Okay, and by price action, I mean candlestick formations. And we what we what we what our prime candlestick formations are going to be is obviously reversal patterns. Okay, so here uh, are the prime reversal patterns that I look for, and mainly the bullish engulfing formation and the bullish insider army. Okay, I find these two formations out of all other trading patterns um, to be the best. Um, for uh, reversals or corrections. We've also got the morning star here uh, and the bullish hammer. Um, I look to dailies, four hourlies, uh, and then and then hourly charts. Um, if I get a reversal pattern at uh, at a level um, that I think there should be support or resistance. Then I can even take it all the way down into five minutes. Um, some of the scalping trades that we used to do were all the way down into five minute and three minute time frames. Three minute time frames are used a lot by future traders. Um, but the main uh, bias that you want to get is obviously off your off your larger time frames. Um, we used to do reports, or I used to do a report a long time ago now, it seems, uh, for FX Street. Uh, which was called time frame breakdowns. So we'd analyze a uh, currency pair in a larger time frame, even going all the way up to sort of a weekly. So we'll break it down from a weekly to a, a daily chart, full hourly, hourly, and then all the way into the shorter time frame to, to try and trade the waves, if you like. So the buyer should always be off, uh, off the higher time frames. Um, not to bore you with time frames, but somebody once um, explained it to me like a like a pack of cards. Basically, if you if you're playing poker, your aces are going to be your um, your weekly. You know, your king, your queen is your daily chart. Um, your jack, your ten is the uh, is the uh, the four hour, and all the way down the the cards. So you you want you you want to be holding some very decent uh, hold cards, if you like. So you want to be, you want to know that you're getting a, a, a good bias off uh, off a larger time frame. No wedge in wedge in the channel breakout, a wedge breakout. Um, I'll show you in a second. Actually, a wedge breakout. You should always look to the um, largest part of the wedge. So basically where the wedge started from. Because obviously it's like a cord spring. So the wedge moves up, moves up, moves up, and then you get this impulsive breakout. What will also commonly happen, which happens a lot in uh, in, in uh, technical analysis, is that the breakout line will be retested. So you get uh, an impulsive breakout, a retest of the wedge, and that's where you want to get your entry. Okay, when it when it then when it tanks lower. Um, but we can show you, or I can show you target levels for um, for wedges uh, in a while. Same same thing with a triangle breakout. Okay, on a symmetrical triangle um, or a uh, ascending or descending triangle formation, you should always look to the widest part of that formation, take it from the breakout line, and that will be your target area. Obviously, if a big, big figure. Um, is in the vicinity, then look to you know to take it off around uh, around the, the big figure as well. Um, flags, uh, you take a slightly different. Instead of taking the, the the width of the actual flag, you want to be taking the flagpole. So the actual length of the flagpole, then the breakout line, and then the length back up or down, whichever way uh, whichever way it may, may be. Okay, so we've got our bullish uh, formation. Sorry, just getting off the uh, off the track a bit there. 
Um, our bearish formations again on here we've got evening doji star, uh, evening star shooting star, and then that uh, bearish inside of army. And just in case people are unsure um, about how to um, trade an insider army candle, you basically want to wait for the next candle to close underneath the high or the low of the insider army. So I'm just going to pull it back. This is probably a better example. So this is your inside bullish your army. Your actual trade is until this, uh, this candle here. Um, and a bullish engulfing candle. A lot. If you uh, if you've got um, automated charts that um, that show you uh, engulfing patterns, just just be careful because the textbook engulfing pattern is a body that engulfs uh, the previous body. So basically, a bearish engulfing would be a red body that engulfs um, a a green body, and obviously vice versa for uh, for a bullish engulfing candle. I prefer the stronger candle is one that completely takes out the range. So here you can see you've got a bullish engulfing candle, but you, there's a small range for the previous candle. So it's virtually like an, the opposite of an insider army. Okay, so you've got the inside ca candle, then it's being engulfed. Here we've got the second candle engulfed. By, by the first candle, so they're basically reverses. What this shows you is a complete change around in investor sentiment, okay, investor bias, and it's it's bias and sentiment that we trade and we forecast at, at PIA, um, because that shows that the market took it lower and then completely reversed their sentiment, their bias, and brought it all the way back up again. A bullish, a, a textbook bullish and candle, a bullish and golfing candle, doesn't necessarily do that. It only takes out the uh, the the open and the close. Okay, this takes out the high and the low, and I believe that that is uh, is a very important fact. Okay, so bearish candles. Now, can you see this? Okay, I was um, going to zoom in a little bit on here. So this is Elliott Wave principle. And this is this is dollar Swiss, and this is actually a four-hour chart uh, that we have <coughs> at the moment. Now, also in Elliott Wave, what you want to be looking for, you want to be looking for impulse and corrective moves. Now, also impulse impulsive moves move up quickly. So here we've got a very strong impulsive move off the base. Obviously, it has to be the low because you need to target where your first wave. Uh, comes in from. So here we've got an impulsive move up. Okay, it stops with a rejection. This is obviously the, the hardest part um, to analyze or to forecast is the first wave. She then moves lower after a pin bar, and I know it's probably difficult for you guys to see. Um, and then she moves moves back down. An Elliott wave, first wave impulsive, second wave corrective. Okay, corrective wave sequences. And normally in free in free wave patterns. Excuse me. So here we've got a nice free wave pattern, an ABC formation, or one two three, that brings you down to fifth uh, to the second wave. And here it should stop between fifty and sixty one point eight percent. And at that point, in between this zone, you want to be looking for bullish. Signals. Now, as we've just said, um, a bullish signal for me, or a change in investor sentiment, is an insider army, insider army uh, with uh, a confirming bullish candle afterwards, or um, an engulfing candle. And here we've got a pause. We've got an insider army. What what a lot. Um, What a lot of um, analysts. So I'm just reading that um, dance chat. What is your wave one street is stronger? Wave is your wave one street complex ABC. I'm just 
this is the forecast that I have. I'm not getting trying to get out of the question. It's an impulsive move up, corrective move down. But I'm, I'm not going to get too in depth then about uh, Elliott Wave. Um, a lot of institutional clients um, shudder when you when you when you mention uh, Elliott Wave formation. What I do use a lot is um, is Fibonacci. Okay, um, a lot of the um, indicators that I overlap onto my charts are based around Fibonacci levels. Um, even my moving averages uh, are based around Fibonacci. Um, so this, I'm trying to show how to use Fibonacci. Um, you could be right. It could it could be uh, an ABC, uh, although C. Uh, looks a looks a bit long for me. Plus, this uh, is obviously a symmetrical triangle formation. Um, so, the pullback to um, between 50 and 61.8 percent, and then we get uh, the inside of army uh, formation, and then obviously an impulsive uh, move up. This wave three is broken into three. One, two, three, four, five. I know it's overlapping. Like I said, I'm trying to get into install the importance of, of, uh, of the Fibonacci levels um, as opposed to uh, doing a, a lecture or a, or a webinar on uh, on any wave. Um, so we get the impulsive move up. It actually, pauses at 127 percent. Um, I'm very wary of this level. Uh, if I do get pauses, pullbacks around to 127%, uh, then I do start looking um, for uh, symmetrical patterns uh, because 127% is one of the prime areas uh, that they uh, that they target. Okay, so we have moved up again here. Price action inside of Army uh, and the the, uh, the pair. Uh, moves lower once more, then up to 161.8%. The reason why, I, I know this is very messy, this third wave up, um, but another reason why I think it could potentially be um, a uh, an Elliott Wave formation is because of this consolidating pattern, okay? Uh, it pulled back to between 23.6 uh, and 38.2. Uh, got an inside of Army candle, moved up again, and formed a symmetrical pattern, a symmetrical triangle uh, formation, um, which is often present in uh, the fourth wave formation uh, before the next breakout. Um, as, as I try to get across, I'm not, I don't trade to Elliott Wave. Um, I, I take note of wave formations, but what I take more note of is the Fibonacci levels. Um, a lot of times I've seen uh, wave formations where even the even the fourth wave has overlapped the top of wave one, but she's still reversed and moved straight up to 261.8%. So I'm not lecturing you saying that you should um, Purely, you know, hunch around for Elliott wave formations. I'm just saying, when wave formations are present, you want to be taking note of the Fibonacci levels. You then want to get everything else involved, as we're going to try and explain, or I'm going to try and explain, with your knowledge um, of the rest of the technical analysis that you've gained, i.e., um, candlestick formations, um, chart patterns. And here we have, you know, we have a decent chart pattern, symmetrical triangle. We've had a breakout. I think we've even had a retest um, today. We can have a look at that. Uh, we can have a look at that in a minute. Um, if this is a symmetrical triangle, which it looks like a symmetrical triangle to, to, uh, to me, and it breaks out to the upside, because you've got to remember, symmetrical triangle uh, has it's not as strong uh, as an ascending triangle, but it's still after a move up. It has a bias to break to the upside. Um, 
we supply um, technical analysis reports to institution and retail clients. Um, I said we're, we're FSA regulated. Uh, we we and because we're FSA reg regulated, we can recommend uh, trades. Um, I'm not here to discuss my personal trading record um, because that's outside of my remit, basically, for um, the PIA first trade. Um, I did. I can tell you, I did take a dollar Swiss long on on the break of here. Okay. This symmetrical triangle breakout. I would actually. This look. We've we've got three waves up. We've got a fourth wave correction. We've got a symmetrical triangle breakout. Um, if this is correct, then you can either look to 261.8 percent, or um, you can take this flag pole. This is looking more and more like a flag formation. Okay. And then you take the length of the flag pole to the top, and then you take that target um, as uh, your your target area. So it's all pointing to a potential fifth wave. The flag, the symmetrical triangle, the fib levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Trading is about trying to get a bias. Okay, the bias here is clearly to the upside. Okay, you're making higher highs, higher lows. Um, I trade with the trend. I, no, I, I, I never um, counter trend. So I would be looking for long positions because of the bias. Okay, the sentiment, which which I've already already mentioned mentioned before, the sentiment at the moment is up. There is no reason uh, for me to believe um, that this. Um, should come off basically. Um, if I, I mean, I'm not trying to get out of the questions, um, but <laughs> there's always a but, isn't there? Um, my role at PIA First Trader, where I'm now employed, is different from my previous role. My previous role was at Analyst trader. I hosted um, a trading room uh, where I basically was live trading on a speaker from seven o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at, at night. Okay, we made money. Uh, we were a very profitable uh, business. There, I can tell you entry points, exit levels, um, previous trades that I've done. Here, I can't. Okay, we. It's against our. Um, the restrictions that I'm allowed to um, to talk about. Um, I can tell you, any any anybody can look at a chart and tell you what what you should have done. It's what is what you 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 do at the time, which is obviously the important factor. Um, if I see insider army candles with uh, a, a bullish confirmation candle, then that is the entry and that is the stop loss, uh, and you're looking uh, for a decent. For a decent bleed, um, I would have probably, and I keep on saying that because I didn't take the take the trade, got out of half here. Um, not only uh, was it an inside a Rami candle, um, but it was also the weekend. We've got a gap open here. Uh, would have probably got out of the balance here at 127 um, because, I, as I said previously, I would have been worried about uh, a symmetrical pattern. So, you know, theoretically, we can all say what we should have done um, on, a, on a past chart formation. Um, what I'm trying to show here is potentially what can be happening now, because this is obviously, uh, this was taken yesterday, 23rd of November, uh, 22, uh, sorry, um, 20 to 1. Any other questions before uh, we move on? Okay. Then, 
comes a few easy to do. Yes, Carlos. I use FIB levels uh, for reversal and target loans, and then price action um, to uh, to execute trades on my personal account. Um, at PIA First Trader, we have systems in place. Um, we analyse the market, okay, and then our trade recommendations are sent out onto our platform at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they have target levels on them. Uh, they have stop loss levels. Um, target levels will sometimes be FIB levels. They'll have, sometimes there'll be previous highs, previous lows. Uh, sometimes there'll be a day's open. I'm just going to go back to this slide for a bit. Um, the most important one is the bearish inside of Rami. Um, or the or a bearish engulfing candle, which I haven't got up there at the moment. Okay, here again, uh, this is euro dollar. Four hour chart. Okay, I mean, not a great example, but I'm just showing, trying to explain and show uh, the relevance of the uh, of the fib levels so wave 1 wave 2 wave 3 down to 161.8% wave 4 gap open um, move up to close the gap zoom in there we've got a bearish engulfing candle again which confirms to the downside i mean you've got to read the market and markets are erratic, especially especially at the moment. Um, I wouldn't say to somebody just because 100, just because you've got 161.8 percent there, you, sh you know the market's going to going to get there and that's going to be your target level. But you know a lot of times you're leaving trades on overnight. You put in your stop loss. Where's your where where is your forecast? You have to have a forecast because you have to have a risk reward. If you ever take a trade, um, if you if you, if you ever take a trade. Without a specific um, stop and limit orders, um, then you're not you're not trading with, with money management. Okay, so Fibonacci levels uh, gives you uh, that edge, uh, if you like. Um, but as I say, the markets are continuously evolving, and things that we can see uh, quickly. Uh, our price action, okay, price action and bias. Here's the bias to the downside. Are we making lower lows, lower highs? Um, what are the RS, uh, RSI say, which we'll get on into, we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Um, and what, what is the price action? Um, I'm going to throw in a name here, but there's a very good um, forum called James 16, um, and he talks about um, he talks about price action, but he talks about price action around important areas. Excuse me. And those important areas are, um, I don't use pivot points, I don't know if he, he does, but a lot of them are around Fibonacci levels, previous highs, previous lows, um, longer term channels, wedges, etc. Okay, so price action to me is the backbone. Of, um, of, of of currency analysis and currency trading, uh, taking it from a larger time frame. But then when you get down into these smaller time frames, you need to know that you have a, a, a decent risk reward. If you're trading into what you believe to be a third wave, you can normally get a stop pretty pretty tight below a second wave, okay, B below your either bullish or bearish uh, engulfing or inside a Rami candle, you're then looking potentially to 261.8 percent. Okay, so you you should have got in before uh, before the top of the first wave if you're lucky enough. So you've got a lot of R and R there, a lot of risk reward. 
for potential for potential gains. Um, I wouldn't suggest just purely trading. Um, um, sorry, uh, candle formations, reversal candle formations, um, because they do occur inside uh, trends, and they can trip you up. So, what you really want to be looking for is at important levels. Okay, and that's what we said before: chart formations, um, candlestick formations at important levels. Uh, I put multiple fib levels. On the charts and look for areas of confluence. Start with higher time frames. Yeah, that's that's fine to do. I mean, a lot of the time, obviously, you look at you look at a wave and then you put a retracement on it. You, 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 you put the retracement on for fifty and sixty one point eight percent because you think that you can get a bullish count. And this again is is the trouble uh, with uh, Elliott wave principle. You know, if you look, at, I was a long time ago as a member. Of, um, shouldn't really mention the name, um, at a website, uh, an institution that purely uh, bases their analysis on Elliott Wave. And what would happen a lot of the time, one day they'll be bearish, next day they would be bullish, and they'll constantly change the wave count okay, into complex uh, patterns, which the complex patterns normally happen in the reversal sequence. And the complex pattern will have another leg, then another leg, then another leg, and you think, oh my God, it's just, it's going on forever. So, as I said previously, I wouldn't trade to Elliott Wave, but it's good to know the principle, it's good to know the projection levels, it's good to know where you should expect that second wave to pull back to. And then if you get a pause at 161.8%, you know, um, a reversal pattern or a continuation pattern, Around 23.6 or 38.2 is a great place to enter for a low risk, high reward uh, trade, and that's 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 really um, that's really what you know what we're all looking for. Um, so again, here on this, if it is a fourth wave pullback, um, inside our army, um, confirming candle. Okay, and then you move back down. Um, Pull off that one there. Okay, so this um, Len was just saying about multiple um, fib levels. You know, a lot of the time I will put projection fib levels on, which is here, sterling dollar four hour, and I'll also put reversal fib levels on. So this is obviously a, a larger wave that's coming up from here, okay, and then this is the wave down. Because you've got to remember, if you believe the hype about um, institutional <coughs> uh, clients um, push, pushing markets, then obviously there's going to be bull, but bulls and bears out there, basically. So you'd have bulls looking for a, a potential 161.8% or further on the way down, and you'll be having, you'll have bulls looking for a stop and reversal at around 50 to 61.8 percent so it is a good idea as Len asked to have both your projection levels on uh, and your retracement levels so here is an example um, 161.8 percent okay is here but I've also got this retracement level just coming down this right hand side here and you, you can you can see that you've sort of got a double whammy effect here because you've got 161.8 percent which came in perfectly at 156.93, okay, and then we're between 50 and 61.8, so a good chance uh, of a pullback uh, around uh, this uh, Fibonacci level. So we're going to talk about Elliott Wave and um, complex chart formations. But I mean, the, the, the subject topic is uh, is FIB. Um, I think it 
he must be bored today with being a New York holiday. Um, so we've got the move down here. Again, I'm, I'm talking about um, reversal patterns. Okay, inside of Rami, this is a bearish engulfing pattern here. Notice I call this one a bearish engulfing pattern because it took out the whole range uh, again. Okay, so even though we have uh, a red body, um, I've just finished this slide. So even though we have a red body, this, this candle here takes out the whole range. Okay, moves down. What do we have? An inside army candle. So I don't, I don't just want to lecture you or, or talk about, I'm not lecturing you, uh, presenting to you. Um, Fibonacci, I want to talk about how you can utilize it and use price action uh, and other indicators um, to, to formulate trades, basically. Um, here, we've got the internal army moves back up, okay, and then again, uh, another bearish engulfing. And all the way down here, bearish engulfing candle, we're making lower lows, okay, bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing candle. No decent signal here. Okay, that to me uh, is not a decent candle. Um, even though it's at 161.8%, it did spike through. Um, there's also a doji afterwards, uh, which would probably make me believe that it's not going to stop at this level and it's going to keep on going down. But it didn't, it moved up uh, and, then, uh, and then pushed lower. I think 1561 put a further on 15 minute charts. And the best time to use it. Because you know when a higher or low is worth using. Um, a higher or low is worth using normally if you get a reversal pattern at that high or low, uh, which we talked about, um, bearish engulfing. Look to four hour time frames, uh, look to hourly time frames. I don't go any shorter than that to try and get a reversal pattern. Um, I don't use 15 minute charts. Uh, I get all my bias uh, off an hourly chart and then if I am trading I will use a 5 minute, 3 minute and sometimes 1 minute um, chart to, uh, to, gain, to gain entry. Uh, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a very cheap entry. I'm looking to trade in multiple units, um, minimum of 2. I then get one off uh, stop loss to entry or stop loss uh, to the high uh, and then I try and run the balance basically um, and it's always worked uh, quite well for me so okay so we talked about here about the fact that we didn't have any um, decent reversal pattern so this was remember this was a four hour chart so I then break it down into an hourly chart, and here, okay, I've also got the RSI on here. Here we get a bullish engulfing candle, okay. Um, I use a week. I always look at a weekly chart for a, for a bias. Um, I look at four-hour charts for reversal um, signals. And I look at hourly charts <coughs> uh, for sentiment. Um, so basically, um, if the if the if the trend is is pushing down, um, and it's if the hourly trend is lower, and for that I'm using very s simple um, technical analysis tools like moving averages, like uh, RSI trading under 50, um, then. As I said before, I'm not trying to pick tops and bottoms. Um, I'm trying to trade with the trend uh, most of the time. Um, I will counter trend it if I get a uh, symmetrical uh, pattern, oh, which we can talk about in a minute. So here, um, we've got that breakdown into the hourly chart. So we get a bullish engulfing pattern um, at 161.8%. I know somebody said that this uh, this chart doesn't look very good as far as any wave is concerned, but it doesn't look too shabby to me. Uh, we've got a decent stop at 161.8%. Uh, 
you know, further analysis, what have we got? We've got divergence here. The chart makes uh, a lower low, whereas the RSI uh, makes a higher low. So if we put a MACD on there as well, it would show uh, some divergence. So we've got divergence. We've got 161.8%. We've got a bullish engulfing candle. Uh, the price moves up in a three-way pattern, which is a corrective sequence. Okay, what do we get? Uh, and I also should have put 23.6 and 38.2 on here, so I do apologise for that. Um, what do we get at the top of C wave? <coughs> um, we get an engulfing candle formation. Um, I'm obviously not making these up, and these are charts. Uh, well, this is a chart that was taken yesterday. Okay, so it's it's real time. I haven't had to scour uh, back, you know, through the last six weeks worth of data uh, to try and show you um, Fibonacci uh, levels. They're, they're relevant all the time. Okay, so here um, a bearish engulfing candle, uh, and again the trend moves lower, and just. If you can do as well, just put 50 line uh, on your RSI. I actually use a setting of 15. Um, and a lot of the time, the market will spoof. So you, it'll move up, hit the 50 line, okay, and then and then come lower. I know we've got divergence here. But it did make that 161.8%. A lot of the time on a break, when it's breaking around the 50, it's consolidating in between the moving averages. And again, I'm getting off the subject a bit here. And what happens on the break of 50? We get a break of 50 here. If we move up to the chart, we get a bullish engulfing candle. Again, it's not textbook, but it's the ones that I like. It's taken out. It's come down, tested support. It's taken out the previous uh, green candle. And then it's moved up, okay, bearish engulfing, and then come down. So, any um, other questions uh, before we move swiftly on? So, no vowels on uh, in a second. Um, Okay, um, a bullish butterfly pattern, X, A, B, C, D. This is an hourly chart, uh, sorry, a daily uh, sterling dollar chart. Um, wave B to C should stop around 61.8%. Here we've actually got a spike lower, okay. Yes, I enter after the uh, after the the, the, the a, a candle formation is not a candle formation until that 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 time frame is closed. So I don't try and predict uh, where the time frame is closed because a lot of the time it will break the top of the previous candle. You'll sit there and think, um, oh, that's definitely going to go. You'll enter it and it will just turn around, reverse, and turn into something completely different. The candle formation is not a candle formation until until it's complete. It's like uh, if you're looking at a wedge formation and it keeps on winding up and winding up and winding up, you think to yourself, well, it's definitely going to break lower because it's a big coiled spring and I'm going to get 200 pips out of that. And you pull the you pull the trigger and you set it before it it breaks the the break line. And all that happens is it just takes out the top and it's it's not a wedge. It's a wedge is only um, a reversal wedge if it's broken. <clears throat> so 161.8% moves up um, to, this is actually 80, uh, 88.6 or 0.886, okay, um, for C wave and then down in D wave. This is actually short. D wave should be, uh, if you take wave A, to, to X, it should be uh, 127, 127.2% of this sequence. Okay, so this one uh, was slightly short. Uh, target level on, con on confirmation, 
um, of a base, and here it was a very large spike in. Doji, uh, which uh, wouldn't have been my favourite uh, favourite candle. Um, on these um, symmetrical patterns, the target level is between 50 and 61.8 percent of the whole sequence. I take the lead, you then retrace it up to between 50 and 61.8 uh, and percent. Um, <clears throat> this was done yesterday. Okay, I, t I did all this analysis yesterday. Um, as PIA first trader, I don't analyze um, sterling dollar uh, or euro dollar, so um, I can't forecast on those pairs. Basically, that's for my colleague to do. I wouldn't expect him to, to forecast on uh, on the pairs that uh, that I analyze. Um, so this is for presentation purposes only. Okay, complex symmetrical patterns. We've got crab, butterfly, bat, and dartly, uh, and also an ABCD uh, pattern. Um, if anybody uh, does want a, I think I've got a PDF uh, format of these, a printout uh, of these somewhere. So if anybody wants to um, send me uh, their contact details um, via or, or post something into the chat at uh, for uh, fxstreet.net. Uh, I've got a blog on that site, and I'll uh, endeavour to get you a copy over. Uh, has all the um, correct uh, fib levels on them. So here um, again, this is uh, euro dollar one hour. This again was taken from yesterday, okay, and there's a bearish uh, Dartley formation. So here we've uh, we've got the XA leg move back up to two, to 61.8 percent, okay, which was virtually pit perfect. Okay, move back down to 38.2, and then a move up. And here, okay, for the Dartley pattern, this is where we're taking the projection. Okay, just to zoom in a bit. So here, I know they look very complex. The easiest way to spot them is that 127%. Um, again, when I was hosting the, the, the trading room, I used to say, oh, the, the dreaded 127%, because I would have a forecast for a higher FIB uh, projection, and it would get to 127%. It would, it would either pause. Uh, sometimes I'd panic, just come out. Sometimes I'd take half. Uh, sometimes uh, the whole trade would come off um, because I'm always aware of symmetrical patterns. So here, move up to 127%. Uh, also lines up, it should line up with between 78 and 88.6% of this wave. Okay, so you can see here these two levels, these two levels here are exactly the same. So 127% of wave A B should line up. Pretty pretty close to 78.6, and this was euro dollar um, on the 23rd. Well, this is actually price action on the 21st and 22nd. Okay, so this is the formation without. Um, what is your target? One sort of 127. Again, it's 50 or 61.8 percent of the whole formation. But a lot of the time, uh, they can push, especially if it's it. in butterflies, crabs, and bats, it's 50 and 61.8 percent. In um, the Dartley pattern, it can push a hell of a lot lower, uh, which it has done here. So this is a one hour chart, and you can see, sorry, this is the four hour chart, one hour chart, sorry. You can see here that we have no reversal pattern. Now, I can see price rejection. If I'm aware of that, I don't, I'm not saying that I necessarily go hunting for signals because I want something to confirm my analysis. But I've all, what I've all already explained as well is that a lot of the time in uh, 
symmetrical, uh, complex symmetrical patterns. I will break it down into shorter time frames, um, normally all the way down into five minutes. So the hourly chart doesn't give a reversal pattern, but the 30 minutes does. Okay. So if you just zoom in there, pincer tops or chopsticks, and this again, as far as I'm concerned, is an inside Arami candle. It's inside this candle formation, uh, and then we've had a very decent sell-off indeed, which I haven't got on here at the moment. But I think it moved all the way down here, didn't it? Okay, that was good timing. Uh, it's one minute uh, to five o'clock. Any questions? Again, just just so that I can. Um, explain what I was trying to get across to, to everybody. I'm fanatical about SIV levels. Um, I'm not fanatical about Elliott Wave, but if Elliott Wave shows itself around the SIV levels that I'm looking for and I get um, chart formations that confirm um, uh, reversals or continuation patterns at Fibonacci levels, that line up, then um, the risk reward, as I said, and you know, ninety percent of not ninety percent, um, a great deal of trading is um, is regarded uh, is is in regards to money management and risk and reward. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions at all? I think um, Val is about to. Uh, is about to start now. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it informative. I'm sorry because of the few minutes delay that we had getting started that um, I didn't get onto um, onto the live live charts. But uh, hopefully next week. Okay. Good luck, and uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers.